For this example, um, I plan on working through problem 13.1 in the textbook, and I've simplified the language a little bit to make it easier to follow, uh, but nothing's left out that is uh, not important. And so uh, as we go through this, the big thing to pay attention to is how do you know which test we're going to use? And then how do you figure out the expected frequencies for that particular test? And so we're told a large retailer receives shipments of batteries for consumer electronic products uh, in packages of 50 batteries each. So what they did was they took a random sample of 400 packages. So that's actually 400 packages of 50 batteries from the center and they test the batteries because not all of them are going to be perfect. And they're curious the breakdown of how often are they, are they defective in some way. And so we're given the data for this. And so I look at the data and I see that um, 165 of the packages had no defects. So that's what that means. 133 had one defect. Um, 65 had two defects, 28 had three, and nine had four or more. And so they're wondering if they can uh, evaluate this, if they can treat this as a binomial distribution with a probability of success of 2%. But remember, success here is whatever we're counting. So in that case, it's number of defectives uh, and n equal to 50. So it's saying for a particular package, can we treat it as the probability of a defect is binomial with a 2% chance? And so we're going to test this at a 1% level of significance. Okay, now I immediately know that this is a chi-square goodness of fit test because we're wondering if a binomial distribution will fit this data. And so when I go and figure out what uh, the expected frequencies look like, I'm going to assume my null hypothesis is true. In other words, to test this, what I'm going to need to do is compare H0. Uh, this data follows a binomial distribution. with p equal to 0 0.02 and n equal to 50. And then ha, the data does not follow. This type of distribution. And so this right here, this data from the actual counts, these are observed frequencies because these come from the data that was collected. These are observed. And so what we need to do is figure out expected under H0 that if this data came from such a binomial distribution, what would we expect as the frequencies, right? So when I think about that, I need to say, okay, well, if it was binomial with this, how many of these packages should have had no defects, et cetera? And so I went through and actually already did the math for this. And I came up with the following. So I, I rewrote the question at the top so that we don't forget what we're doing here. And notice what I did. So I think that this is not at all obvious. So remember what my H0 and HA are? I, I erased that, so let me put it back here. So data is binomial or follows a binomial distribution with n equals 50, p equals 0 0.02. And data is not binomial with that distribution. Okay, so I assumed H0 is true to find my expected frequency. So I said, okay, if this is in fact true, how many out of the 400 packages, how many should have contained zero defects? And I said, well, the percentage comes from the probability. And if it's binomial, that probability is a binomial PDF because we're talking about equals zero. This is probably X equals zero. Probably X equals zero, so that'd be 50.02 and then the value you're interested in. Then I multiply by 400 because they actually sampled 400 packages. And I got, I expect 145.668. And then for X equals one, I did the same thing. This is probably X equals one to get the percentage and then times 400, probably X equals two, probably X equals three. And then this last one, four or more, it's been a while since we uh, did binomial distribution, but four or more, probably X is greater than or equal to four is equal to one minus the probability X is less than four. So the way I found this probability right here, one minus probability X is less than four would be one minus binomial CDF of three because we're looking at, uh, again, remember we have many uh, up to 50 batteries here. And so we're looking at everything from uh, four and up. So that's equivalent to everything from three and down. And so that's where this came from. I had to use CDF because I'm counting more than one. Before it was equals, now it's an inequality. And so when I multiplied that by 400, I get 7.103. Now, once I have my expected and my observed, so remember this over here, this is observed. 
This is expected under H naught. And so what I want to do now is figure out what my test statistic would be in this situation. And so for my test statistic, it's always going to be the same thing. It's the difference between observed and expected squared divided by expected, and you add all of those up. So my chi-squared test statistic will be, so remember, observed minus expected, 165 minus 145.668 squared divided by 145.668. And so we're going to keep adding these. For each pairing. Now this is one spot where I think it's very important that you practice this with your calculator. I mean, all it is is subtraction, squaring, and dividing, right? But it's very easy to make a mistake somewhere. So if it was me, I would calculate these piece by piece and then add them up. Um, when you do this, and you should double check you get the exact same thing, you should end up with 6.461 approximately. And so this is my test statistic. And so remember what this does is it measures the difference between what we expected and what we observed, if the bigger that difference is, the bigger this will be, and the more likely we are to reject H naught. And so the hard work really was finding the expected frequencies. And so you could do this with anything. So if I said, I think this distribution looks like this, we would figure out what the expected frequencies would be under that, etc. Okay, now, if for any test, once I have the test statistic, I need a rejection region. And so this is, again, a chi-squared test. And it's always right tail because we're testing how big the test statistic is. Remember, we had a significance level, it says they're up at the top of a 0.01, so I put my 0.01 out here. And now, what are my degrees of freedom? It's always the number of groups, so in this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 groups, minus 1. So we got 4 for my degrees of freedom. If you look this up on the table, you end up with 13.2767. Definitely, this isn't big enough, so my uh, test statistics out here, and so in other words, uh, my test statistic 6.461 is smaller than 13.27, I'll just say 7. And so I fail to reject H naught, we're not in the rejection region. So if I fail to reject H naught, what I'm actually saying is there's no evidence it's not this distribution, so there's no evidence that this does not follow. the, the uh, proposed distribution. Just trying to shorten it up so it'll fit there. In other words, I'm not proving H naught. You can never prove H naught, but I don't have evidence that this distribution won't work. Uh, so I could probably treat the data as if it's under this distribution and uh, I shouldn't have any problems. So again, this, this test is a little different in what we're looking for. And I got to be careful how I interpret this. I didn't prove that it's binomial but I certainly showed that we could treat it like that. There's no evidence that that would uh, be, be wrong. 